Space Medicine – How Space Affects Bone Health Bones are often thought of as almost non-living structures. After all, when someone dies and decays, all that is left is usually their bones. But the skeletal system is actually a complex organ of the body. Bones serve several functions. The long bones in the legs and arms and also in the sternum contain bone marrow stem cells that make our blood and immune cells. We'll cover these in Space Medicine Radiation Training. Bones have a crystal matrix called hydroxyapatite. These crystals of hydroxyapatite are embedded within a flexible protein network of collagen. Collagen is one of the main support proteins of the body. It is found in every organ and is a leather-like material that provides strength and flexibility to tissue. In fact, most of leather is this material from an animal's skin. Think of collagen as nature's carbon fiber. Strong and flexible with limited elasticity. That brings us to the next protein, elastin. Elastin is the spandex of the body. It allows our tissues to stretch. Parts of the body that must stretch and return to their original shape, like muscles, have more elastin than tissues that are not supposed to stretch as much, like bone. The collagen is formed into a fibril, about half a micrometer in diameter, that are bundled into fibers. These fibers will have channels through them, called the Haversian canals, and nerve fibers. The Haversian canals contain blood vessels to bring nutrients and remove toxins and the nerve fibers to allow innervation so our body can feel bone stress and injury. Bones have a complicated structure. They will have a clear plastic-like sheath called periosteum, which does have quite a bit of elastin, then a solid layer of bone called the cortex. Most bones have a partially hollow interior to save weight with support structures called trabeculations crisscrossing in them. Remember, bones have a network of tunnels in them to allow access to blood vessels and nerves. The canals will sometimes be cross-connected by something called Volkmann's canals. Around the Haversian canal, there will be active bone cells, fibroblasts making collagen, and osteocytes, cells that maintain the bone structure. Osteocytes and other cells form a circular cylinder, kind of a bone functional unit. We'll call an osteon. Bone is a highly active organ. It is constantly being broken down and built back up. The cells that do this are osteocytes, and they come in two types. Osteoclasts break down bone structure for reabsorption, and osteoblasts build bone structure back up. The body is constantly trying to get rid of extra bone mass. If bone mass is unnecessarily heavy, it restricts movement. The osteoclasts are constantly removing any bone that does not seem necessary to support recent stress patterns. If this goes too far, you can get osteopenia, which is thin bones. Then as it progresses, osteoporosis, which is weak bones. This makes you more prone to fracture. The osteoblasts build up bone and add extra wherever stress patterns indicate a need. They can put on too much bone in some conditions. When an adult has a fracture of a bone, it usually heals thicker than the original bone, showing up on x-rays forever. The extremes of this cause a condition called hyperostosis, where bones get abnormally thick or even worse, fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, where the osteoblasts start mineralizing all the collagen in your tissues. Eventually you cannot move and become like a statue. Leontiasis ossea causes the facial bones to thicken abnormally, and is a terrible malady to suffer, often caused by Piaget's disease, which is a hyperactive parathyroid hormone syndrome. On the other hand, if bone structure gets too weak from undermineralization, like in Piaget's disease or vitamin D deficiency, if the bone becomes too brittle, it will fracture, like in osteoporosis. A lot of elderly people develop this disease as they age, especially small women. What keeps bones healthy and what causes these terrible maladies? To keep bones healthy, we start with genetics. Inherited conditions or predispositions cause some bone problems. Osteoporosis is a normal consequence of aging. The aging bone cells do not replace the bone material as efficiently and the bones get weak. Men have, on average, a thicker, heavier bone structure than women. This means that elderly men suffer less osteoporosis than do women. Men are also heavier on average. A man's bone gets a better workout supporting the extra mass. This sends signals to the bone to strengthen. Active, heavier women suffer less bone loss than inactive or lighter women. Osteopenia is what we call a condition where bone mass is lost but has not reached the level of osteoporosis.
spaceflight osteopenia has been studied in space medicine extensively because, in zero or low gravity, without stress being placed on the bones, they start to be reabsorbed by the body. This starts to happen very quickly. Calcium is one of the main elements of the bone crystal matrix, hydroxyapatite. Calcium levels start to rise within just 24 hours of someone being bedridden or in a low gravity environment. This reabsorption of bone and production of calcium into the blood can be offset by weight bearing exercise, but not completely. Apollo 11 had a duration of about a week from July 16 to July 24. Most of that time was spent in low gravity, either in space or on the moon. The moon has one sixth normal earth gravity. But many people forget that the spacesuit worn outside the ship weighed 180 pounds. All the astronauts had to be no more than 5 foot 7 inches tall and weigh no more than 180 pounds, which is about 207 centimeters and 70 kilograms. This means that the suit weighed as much as they did and added to their personal weight, which would have been about 30 pounds on the moon, increased their effective mass to 60 pounds. This added mass gave them a better workout. These were all also carefully selected exceptionally fit and healthy men. Bone loss in space has been measured at 1 to 2 percent per month for astronauts on the Mir space station. Compare this to 1 to 1.5 percent per year in the elderly and 2 to 3 percent total for women after menopause. It turns out that hormones have a large effect on our bone health. Calcitonin is a hormone that adds bone mass while parathyroid hormone signals reabsorption. Vitamin D is necessary for strong bones and helps calcium crystallize and strengthen bone. A lack of vitamin D can cause bone weakening and growth or abnormality. Colonists on the moon, Mars, or in an orbital habitat will not be sunbathing. You would burn instantly, and going outside without a pressure suit would be bad. Vitamin D supplements will be necessary. The data from the Russian Mir space station is one reason why there is so much exercise equipment on the International Space Station. There's a treadmill, a stationary bike, and a resistance or weight machine on the ISS to strengthen muscle and bone. A heavy spacesuit on the moon or Mars would be a good thing. In fact, a layer of water-soaked sponge, just 2.5 centimeters thick, would help with radiation shielding and add considerable mass. An astronaut who is 5 foot 10 inches and 190 pounds on Earth would have a body surface area of about 2 square meters. If 1.5 square meters were protected by the water shield at a thickness of 2.5 centimeters, that would give a volume of about 0.0375 cubic meters or about 37.5 kilograms of water, easily carried on Mars or the Moon. That would be in addition to the air tanks, pressure tanks, climate control systems, helmet, and everything else you need to be in a low pressure environment. There are some medications that are used now to prevent bone loss on Earth. This includes hormone therapy, cell receptor modulators, osteoporosis medications called bisphosphonates, like alendronate or abandronate, and teriparatide, which is a form of parathyroid hormone that stimulates bone thickening. Biphosphates block osteoclasts from reabsorbing bone, slowing down this process. Teriparatide stimulates osteoblasts, encouraging them to build more bone. In the absence of normal gravity stress, however, this bone may be deposited where it is not needed and lead to some of the abnormal bone thickening conditions we saw earlier. Bone loss has other effects on the body. As the calcium is sent from the bone to the bloodstream, blood levels rise. This can cause a condition known as hypercalcemia, or too much calcium in the blood. Having too much calcium in the blood can cause kidney stones to form and affect heart function, sometimes causing arrhythmia. A kidney stone is one of the most painful things for a person to suffer and would completely incapacitate the strongest astronaut. Heart arrhythmias can lead to death. To solve all these problems, you need one simple thing, artificial gravity. To maintain bone health in transit and to keep people healthy on the colonies, you will need to use centrifugal force to create artificial gravity. This is often ignored by government and private space organizations, but there is no other safe way to colonize space. Please review the course titled Understanding Artificial Gravity. The medications and exercises alone will not be enough for the average person. You can send a carefully selected exploration crew to establish the colony in a ship without artificial gravity. Then send a construction crew to build the infrastructure to allow radiation shielding and artificial gravity for the general colonists to come. Call these early colonists the founders and build statues. They will be sacrificing their health and years of their life to expand humanity into space. Thanks for listening.